I'm Jake Weiss, and I'm working on the Milky Way Home Project. Um, I talked about it a little bit last time. It's just the dis uh, distributed computing network, Milky Way at Home. We work on optimizing the models that we have for tidal streams in the galaxy. And uh, some current problems, or recent problems we've run into, is um, when compiling for Windows, NGW64 has a linker issue, which made it difficult to link to our OpenCL applications, uh, or link our OpenCL applications. So a uh, workaround of that that we found was to use the pre-compiled um, libraries for OpenCL, and oh, well, the wrapper for OpenCL, and then uh, it was able to link it properly. Um, then another problem we're running into is for 32-bit uh, windows. Uh, we're trying to compile it with MinGW64 as the 32-bit compiler, and um, it maintains the 64-bit definitions while trying to compile it as a 32-bit program, which runs into a problem when we're trying to compile the uh, networking infrastructure that we have. So um, it's pulling the Berkeley Open infrastructure for network computing, and um, it has a couple statements in it that if you comment them out, it works. So I have to try and figure out um, whether or not I need to use a different compiler for that, or whether or not um, I can just implement a fix for one, because it's also an open source project. So um, Then the release system that we have takes a really long time to work with. It took about um, two hours or two and a half hours of copying files over and signing files because it's over um, the uh, computer, distributed computing network. So um, you have to sign and encrypt a lot of files and make sure that everyone has um, the proper encryption keys so that they know that they're getting secure files and signed files. Um, which I actually went through and scripted that, so it takes a lot less time now. And then um, for Mac, they implement OpenCL a little bit differently than most other platforms. So um, most other platforms will allow you to pass arrays into OpenCL kernels, which Mac decided to not implement that specific feature of OpenCL. So we had to go through and change some things in the OpenCL code to pass pointers to arrays instead of the actual arrays themselves. Um, but that seems to be working now. Um, and then Linux has this problem where if you're using an older version of Linux, um, they don't usually have the newer libraries for C and C++ on them. So you have to compile against old libraries and the computer that we were compiling on for um, the new separation model that we had um, kind of lost all of its old libraries. So I had to go back and reinstall all of that and get it all working again with all of the proper um, links and everything in the libraries. Um, so with all of that stuff mostly fixed, um, I'm now looking at optimizations on our uh, distributed computing network, Milky Way Home. So one of the major problems with it is it's very fault prone and um, very asynchronous. So you can't necessarily wait for all of your results to be back before you can start working on your next population of results because we're using evolutionary algorithms. And um, all of our results that we get need to be validated in some way because they're going to people's computers where they can take our open source code and compile their own version if they want. So we need to check between multiple uh, users and make sure that we're getting consistent results. Um, so, as far as evolutionary algorithms that we're using for this project, we're using particle swarm and differential evolution for now. And um, we're actually going to be putting in an asynchronous Newton method soon. Um, but someone else is going to be working on that. So, I talked a little bit about these uh, algorithms last time, so I'm not really going to go into them in depth this time. But that's what we're using. Um, as far as current progress, it's a little out of order, I'm sorry. Um, but the first release was successful of my project, and actually the second release as of yesterday seems to be pretty successful. Um, so it's out running on the distributed computing network now for the new modified bit. Um, uh, the release <coughs> yesterday fixed the Mac GPU bug and the Linux library issue. 
Um, like I said, I scripted the release process, so it takes maybe five minutes now instead of two and a half hours to copy all the files over and get them signed and validated. Um, that also reduced human error greatly because it was a lot of copying files through a terminal. Um, there was a huge chance for error, so it was a very scary process actually, um, the first time I did it. And then, um, now I'm on to ensuring that everything optimizes properly. So in the next slide, this is a, a graphic of the likelihood that we have, or the fitness on the, the y-axis, and the number of uh, bodies that are uh, results that we've gotten back on the x-axis. So each of these takes between um, two minutes and an hour to run, but because we're running it on the, the distributed computing network, we have maybe 10 or 20,000 computers running these simulations at the same time. So we get them back relatively quickly. So after about um, a week of progress, we had 95,000 results back. So it was run 95,000 times. And um, as you can see for the, the top curve there, that's the different, that differential evolution statistics. So the green and the black uh, are the average and median cases. And then the blue is the best case. And the bottom, we have our particle swarm uh, results. And this is about over a, a pretty long period. It's actually like 10 days now. Um, the top result is the best result. And then the next two lower ones are the median and averages. Um, the top one you can see is converged to a nice solution, it seems, or it got stuck in the local minimum, which is why I'm running it two more times on top of this to make sure that we, we try and find the global best. And then the particle swarm you can see is still actually getting better, even though it's run 135,000 times now. So I'm going to let that one run and see if it actually converges to the same solution that the differential evolution came up with. Um, Question? Yes. On the next slide. Can you describe the fitness function or what those numbers are? Okay, so the fitness function is a very, very large integral that we numerically compute. It's actually the, most of the entire calculation of the, the project. So um, there's a whole thesis, someone's PhD thesis. Uh, dedicated to it, I can point you towards yeah, that. I remember from last time. Yeah. Why is it that they started so different? It's just, um, it's just random. So, uh, and actually, I started at fifty thousand. So they, they might have started at a, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Similar. It's just if I started back there, they would start at like negative one hundred thousand. It wouldn't have made any sense. So, yeah. Um, but this future jump I thought was really interesting. Uh, how do you do that optimally? How do you do that? The hundred percent or something. What do you mean? The so the do you know the what is the optimal solution? Um, at this point, I don't. I'm using this on real data, uh, data, so I'm running it four or five times and making sure that they all converge to a similar solution. Um, call it this. This is the string that you said, right? Yep. Um, also, I have in the next image or the next slides here. This is what we're originally trying to separate things out of. So we can kind of take a look at the, the starting point, which is this, and the endpoints, and we can see if the solutions make sense, which here you can see this is coming out from the galactic center, and then this is along the, the wedge that we have for, um, or from the galactic center. So it's like there's the galactic plane, and then it's coming out like this, and then yeah. Anyway, so the red here is more dense, and then the purples and white is very sparse. Um, so you can see the density kind of goes out in a smooth <coughs> decaying profile. And then there's this huge bump in the center here, which we think is the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy title screen, which we want to separate out from the rest of the data, which um, here we can see we separated out the background, um, and it's actually really smooth and looks really nice. So the uh, algorithm's doing a good job on that. And then here is the, the stream we pulled out, which also looks pretty good, and it looks like it's in the, the correct place from the, the beginning picture. Um, and then when we do these, we also run two extra streams for garbage collection, just because the background model that we have doesn't necessarily perfectly model the actual real case. 
So in this screen, we can see picked up some more of the background down here. Um, and in this case, we think that there might be another title stream um, pretty much at the same spot as where the Sagittarius work title stream is, but it's kind of like behind it. So um, because they're kind of overlapping in the spot, we think this might actually be some of the other uh, title stream getting caught up in the third stream, and as well as some garbage too, here and here. So this big overdensity we think is part of the uh, bifurcated piece of the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy title stream. So it's like a piece that kind of broke off and then recombined a little bit. So there's two streams there, we think. And all of this stuff looks like it's making sense for now. So it looks like it's optimizing correctly. And um, right now I'm just gonna wait another week or so to see if the other uh, runs that I have up right now come back to have the same or a similar answer. And uh, just a thanks to everyone on the, uh, in Arcos and our professors and then my, prof my research advisor for um, Milky Way at Home and the Milky Way at Home Research Group. And any questions? Yes. Um, so is the fitness being calculated on a test data too? Um, not necessarily for this stuff. This is the second generation of the, the project. So they did all of that previously um, with test data. And we're just making sure that the new fit kind of gives us reasonable answers based on that. So yes. Um, you're talking about these title streams mm -hmm. and what are they? Title streams? Yeah. Um, I explained them a little bit in my last presentation. They're um, dwarf galaxies that are currently colliding with the Milky Way. <coughs> and um, because they're so large, and the gravity of the Milky Way is so large, um, the front of the galaxy and the back of the galaxy gets pulled at different rates, so they get stretched out into these streams across the sky, and that's what we're trying to separate out of the background stars right now. Yeah. Yes? Um, so you mentioned that the 